At first glance, this looks like a regular city street. But look a little closer, and you'll see this city is actually much less than meets the eye, at least in terms of its size. This project is our Washington University and St. Louis mini city that has a series of different attributes that you can mistake for a real city. It's pretty big. It's about 30 feet by 100 feet. The scale is one to eight scale. For comparison, Barbie is about one to six to give you a sense of things that you might have interacted with. And that scale is important because the goal is to test autonomous vehicles in a realistic but safe way. This is typically the evaluation of autonomy of any kind has kind of two phases. One is in simulation, which is relatively easy, relatively low cost, but of course there's always a gap to what actually really happens. The other is, is actual physical scale. Now, on physical scale, you can't take really major risks. For example, any risk of crashing, uh, you could crash on people, for example. There's all kinds of issues when taking major risks. Here, we can actually take pretty substantial risks without really severe consequences. Worst case scenario, okay, we damage, for example, a car. Uh, okay, not great, but not tragic, as opposed to, for example, a real car crashing into something. But creating this mini city took a rather unusual collaboration between the university's departments of computer science and architecture. The city has uh, convincing mailboxes, facades, trash cans, trees, people. The people don't walk around. Everybody always asks them. <laughs> They're not motorized. Um, but Composing the city really was a question of like looking into, okay, what, what do you encounter? How, how is a crosswalk going to be identifiable? Okay, we've got to paint a crosswalk that looks similar. Color matching, we would go out into the street and like color match our yellow paints from Home Depot to the actual paint on the street. Um, so there was a lot of reproduction of, of reality in this sort of way that you might think about a theater set uh, being built. As far as the actual testing on those roads go, they're still in the early phases of what's set to be a 10-year project, one they hope will provide results that are helpful in the real world. I'm hoping to uh, get information to facilitate uh, research improvements and advances. For example, right now what we're doing is autonomous lane following. We're building a car to be able to follow lanes, stay kind of in the middle of the lanes, uh, without much information except for pre predominantly visual information that it perceives as it drives. That's an extremely difficult task because typically in autonomy you have things like GPS, which gives you very precise lo location. And especially indoors, we don't have such precision in terms of location. So this becomes a more challenging problem. It tests uh, the technology that uses just purely visual information for this task. And this project may also prove beneficial for the architects designing the cities of the future. I mean, it certainly shaped the way that I'm, you know, moving forward in my research and, and thinking and really the questions that I'm asking um, about the urban and architectural environment in relation to urban scale AI and, and autonomous vehicles come from thinking about this project. So we're now working on drawings of cities with unusual transportation systems or innovative smart cities and thinking about how policies are being developed in those places um, and at the same time thinking about how the scope of safety, public health, dealing with problems like climate change that have been so greatly exacerbated by vehicles, how we can really improve upon those things given the introduction, wider introduction of autonomous vehicles into our lives at the scale of the city, our globe.